now. Hi, welcome to Clitterly Speaking, the podcast. I'm Michelle Doherty. And I'm Emily Lane. We are BFFs dedicated to bringing you conversations between girlfriends over a bottle of wine. Oh, I am so excited about the wine part. Oh, me too. So pull up a chair, grab your glass, and let's get talking. Hey, 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 Emily. How are you today? Hey, 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 Michelle. <laughs> I'm great. You know, it's our time of the month. It's like my favorite time of the month. It's my favorite time of the right? month, too. Yep. It feels so empowering when it's our time of the month. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we get and to have great conversations, connect with our friends. Drink some wine. Be online with our, our fabulous Facebook uh, yes. uh, fans and Clitorati. And um, I don't know if our, if our fans can tell, but we switched some things up here in Studio yeah. C. I know we're we are next leveling this experience. Yeah, we're yeah. in season five. We thought we would switch it a little up. Maybe like we're getting just that much closer to actually feeling as if we are um, totally legit. I mean, how do you define legit? I mean, we're legit, right? Because we have a great community. Yeah, no, yeah. no. I meant like in the t- in our in our live show. I mean, if you if if our if our viewers want to go back and and look at the one we did in January of 2019, oh, wow. yeah. and then compare it to where we are today, we have we have evolved. We have, and that's yeah. a good thing. Evolution is a very good thing. So, exactly. um, yeah. so yeah. So I thought you know let's just mix it up. Let's. I bought some new toys for the podcast. I mean, <laughs> you have really become kind of a gadget fanatic. I'm really yeah. impressed. Yeah. It's... I had no idea. You were like, yeah, I've got a few new things. And I got here, and I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. Our producer, Denise, is going to be so happy. Yeah. She was She was like, holy shit. Uh, you guys have got a little bit uh, little things going on. And you want me to tie it all together? I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I know. So, um, and, and then, of course, we had the... Uh, we had the uh, uh, last minute uh, run to Walgreens, William. I need some more USB cords. So we want to say thank you to yes. my son William for for going out there and getting it is, getting that done for us. It is the time of the month. You never know when you're going to need supplies at the last minute. <laughs> and <laughs> the Walgreens run. It's always good that you have somebody who's willing to do that for you if you don't have, if you are not able to. So yes. yeah. So before we jump into all of our discussions today and we are going to be taking questions uh towards the end of the show so if you have questions start putting them into the um the comments because we will answer whatever your question is it doesn't have to be on our topic or or anything so we want this um related to that so we're pretty open we have shared all (sighs) kinds of so much stuff i mean some pretty Embarrassing, brutal, wonderful, fabulous, all of the above kinds of things. I need to turn my phone off. <laughs> that happens from time to time too. Okay, so um, in spirit of you know continuing our transparency, um, we are going to share our wine that is helping to foster this nice flowing conversation. Absolutely. So I'm really excited about this. Um, this was I you know I reached out to Jason. I, I told him. Um, that, you know, we're going to be having a great conversation tonight, celebrating the 19th Amendment that passed 100 years ago, 100 today. Years ago today. It's kind yeah, of a big yeah. deal. Yeah, we're going to be yelling for that. Yeah, so I thought, you know, let's let's really have a nice bottle. And so Jason from the Wine Merchant's like, I got you covered. Come on by. I felt so privileged. Did he you? actually greeted me personally to get this bottle. And as you know from our recent conversation <laughs> with him on Sam. the show, Sam, Sam, Sam. he is you know, somebody at risk in these COVID times. So, you know, um, the fact that he gave me the bottle personally is like really helped me feel pretty good. So here's what we're drinking. La Vue, La Vue d'Ognon, a shot enough to pop from 2009. This is what we're drinking. I'm over um, here, over here, Emma. Oh, we're yeah. Wrong camera. Up here. <laughs> I know we get cameras, Daddy. <laughs> so yeah, the, there it is. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, now it's right just in front of your face. Sorry okay. <laughs> about that. Either way. We had to let the interns have the night off so we don't yeah. really know what camera we're at. <laughs> we're, 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 we're 
continuing to evolve. So, I mean, a shot enough to pop is always special. I have not had much of a chance. I gave this one tiny little sip. I know there's more. Well, and this came from Jason's uh, private cellar. Private his cellar. Basement. Yeah. Because he wanted to also celebrate the 100 years of the passage of the 19th Amendment, which we know gave, you know, white women the right to vote. Um, yeah, it was this, it was a step in the right direction. Definitely a step in the right direction, mm -hmm. and uh, we know that uh, that was, um, all women weren't able to vote until the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was passed. Very true. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk more about that. But uh, I absolutely, need to have a sip of this. okay. So I, this shot with the pop. I mean, for me, <laughs> this hits all those notes that I really love in a delicious shot in the pop. You know, I'm getting tons of that terroir, that really earthy black truffle, dense dark fruit. I feel like there's some nice, like, almost like cinnamon bark in here as well. Oh my God. It's just open this, so I haven't had much chance to give it some air. And, um, oh, there's. I know. There's, there's, you know. <laughs> We've, we've got a little... I have a visitor. Yeah. A little he's sweet quite, He's quite um, needy these days. And I don't know if needy is the right mm. word. You know, I'm, I'm relatively a so new good. cat owner <laughs> Yeah, since November. So I'm learning a whole lot. So. Yeah. They are all about love when they want it. And then when yeah. they don't want it, they're like, aren't you good for you? Right. Well, yeah. he is definitely all about love. Um, I may have to... Uh, text a, another family member <laughs> to come get him. Retrieve our little party crash. Yeah. Well, what do you think Salem's wine tasting notes would be? Uh, uh, tastes expensive. If, it, <laughs> if, if this was a, a, put a this is definitely a, um, like a, 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 more like a fancy feast or a, <laughs> a, a cat food you would find at the, uh, at the nicest pet food store in town. Um, not, um, okay. <laughs> not what we feed him normally. Yes. So. All right. Got it. Oh, yeah. goodness gracious. And then if it were a panty. Well, if it were a panty. Um, it's a panty that has something to say. Yeah, it definitely does. It's a pan it's a statement panty. <laughs> it's right. a statement panty. Um Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, it's time for Salem to do something else now, yeah. isn't it? Uh, go, go, go. <laughs> I wish the camera was on this side so you guys could see the, the, the look in his face. The obstinance. <laughs> it's like a man. He's just he's like Hi. he's gonna get his way. Hi. I thought you were gonna like, jump I'm downstairs. Here. I need your love right now. Um, no, but if this were a panty, it's a statement panty. It is, you know, something that is uh, strong and bold and um, it doesn't take any, it, it lets people know when they happen to see you in your panty that you don't take any shit from them. Oh. And it was like a strong statement. You know, it's yeah. strength. Do you know, it's feminine power. Feminine power. Right. So I recently learned, I, you know, I've had some spider dreams lately. Yeah. We're going to do dream interpretations. Oh, why not? Well, there's relevance here, <laughs> okay. you know. Um, we're talking, you know, about the, the feminist movement. Yeah. The rise in the feminine power. And, and um, I've been a little concerned about the fact that I've been having all these spider dreams. But what I learned is that in dreams, spiders are all about um, feminine power. So if you're afraid, like you're in your dream, you're afraid, you know, maybe there's something that you know, you're, you're not, you're something that's getting in the way of you really stepping in and taking your power, which I have to tell you was extremely relevant at the time I was having those dreams. Well, do you want to share more with us on that relevancy? Well, you know, it's, I, think or... it's, I think it's tied into some of the conversations that we've had about, you know, whenever, like, standing up for yourself and how hard that can be, right? And mm -hmm. then how, how you know, after years of conditioning, you know, every time I've stood up for myself, it's come back at me, like, hard. Yeah, and you right? said, like, like sometimes you, when you have stood up in the past, you right. know, the... Um, that you felt like people punched back harder on you. Absolutely. And that's hard to take. I think that's hard for anybody. You know, you kind of get conditioned in that sense to not stand up for yourself. Absolutely. You know? I, 
definitely think that. And, and I'm being encouraged by my friends, by my work, by everybody that's close to me right now to really stand up in it and own it, which is wonderful. I love that. But it's hard because of this conditioning over these, you know, years of, you know, so I'm like, kind of like, okay, I'm going to stand up for myself, you know. Um, it's It's been a very emotional process, and it totally helps me understand these dreams. And once I learned that interpretation, I'm like, ooh, okay, I get it, you know. Yeah. So I think the way to battle this is that for Halloween, I think I should be the spider queen. Okay. Oh. Yeah, really embrace it. Like, yeah, be the yeah, like, yeah. be the you know feminine power. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking you. I mean, I totally see a whole like costume with like the like the web and the legs kind of oh, all around you. You know, Victorian kind of ensemble. A hat with a hat. With a hat. Oh, yeah. for sure. Oh, okay. and a crown, a crown, a crown. Yeah, uh, you know. So, what about you? Have you had any kind of interesting moments this week where you've had to really? wield your feminine power um well it's not very apparent right now since this cat has me completely <laughs> wrapped around his, his fingers right now yeah i totally have a lot of feminine power power. <laughs> I have power except when salem is around uh no i guess this week i i have or this month because it's been it's been a month mm -hmm. since we saw you guys um, live on our Time for Love show. I have pretty much just continued to be, you know, awesome. <laughs> I get awesome. I've just stayed awesome and I've just tried to. Um, oh, yeah, he's slowing down. He's kind of slowing down. Yeah. Want to get a shot of this? No. No, you won't. <laughs> yeah, she's. He's got the movie power. <laughs> yeah, you know, he's yeah. young. <laughs> I mean, I love this shot. Fine, cat. Yeah, I mean, this is this is what everybody's time of the month should be. Mm -hmm. He's actually having sympathy time of the month. This is his sympathy. Is. He's, like, he's, a, oh, he's trying to. Where's the chocolate? To make us feel better. <laughs> <laughs> um, I yeah, I can't think of right now a new thing that I have had to where I've needed to like stand up and be really you know strong or anything like that. You know, like asserting my feminine power. Um, I have uh, just been dealing with, you know, regular like life yeah. and continuing to try to, I mean, we've been busy at work, but continue to try to be, uh, try to stay positive because, you know, we're yeah, on, we're like, still in it. we're still in it five months now, Yeah. you know, and yeah. we've it's kind of, it's kind of worn off its novelty, so. I'm glad that we are, um, you know, in this quarantined yeah. You know, kind of yeah. style now and that you know, we can see each other and have our our conversation here as opposed to remote now and so there's I feel a quality is starting to return even though we're still in the thick of it. Right. You know. Right. So and then we were also were able to go do an amazing thing together last this last week, which I think maybe we should talk about a little bit. Yeah, and we definitely wanna talk yeah. about it. Um last uh, last week we went along with our friend Nikki and our producer um, Denise to see the uh, Beyond the Ballads exhibit at the Missouri History Museum. If you have not had a chance to go see this yet, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you do that. It is free. It is. Uh, it will be at the History Museum until March, like 22nd or something of 2021. Uh, what you do have to do is. Um, uh, go on their website and you have to register for tickets because that's how they monitor who's in there and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But I want to go back several times. Me too. And then it was so good. We'll talk about that. But it was so good. We were so moved by the exhibit that we reached out to the young woman. The, I'm going to say young woman. I mean, she could be my age. I don't know. But the Young wo woman? <laughs> the woman who put, put it together for the History Museum. Her name is Katie Moon. And we are going to have an episode with her going really in depth on the exhibit and everything that was in it and how she put it together in this season. So it'll be an yeah. additional thing for season five. We're very excited about that. But Emily, why don't you share a little bit of your reactions mm. to the exhibit at the History Museum? And so timely. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I have to celebrate that for us 
you know, the, yeah. the, the, going right before the show and the anniversary being today. And it's just, I, I, I think that's something that's really special about what's happening right now with our community and with our show is that you're, we're finding these wonderful timings that just, you know, about life that are unfolding naturally. And it's, it's great. But that exhibit, um, I, uh, it's so much to process. It's a lot. You have to. We you were there see, at least three hours. Right. And you have to be ready to, like, absorb it all. And, you know, I, I definitely, I recognized kind of towards the end, I wasn't actually fully comprehending all the information anymore. because You were saturated. Yeah, because Nikki and I, I was like, <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Why? Like, and, you know, I was like, wait a minute. Why is it that, you know, what really happened? Because I see all of these, you know, these free, these amazing um, black women who were free that were really making things happen in this time, su successful entrepreneurs, what happened from the way the law was written to, to preventing the vote from being in their hands? And Nikki was like, oh, well, it's written over here. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> that just completely, I'm like, I'm past the point of absorption on that. But, so what's um, really nice about this exhibit is that it focuses on the St. Louis women who were who impacted or helped to um, impact the passage of the of the, 19th, the Amendment. 19th Amendment. And so there's is, a lot of history. Oh my gosh! And there are things, and I know that we have listeners and viewers all over the world. But um, if you're if you're a woman in St. Louis, we built this city. We, the, some of the most amazing yeah. institutions that exist today are things that we put together. I mean, okay, yeah. I'm saying we as, as a female, but like Barnes Jewish Hospital started by women. Right. Um, Many educational institutions, uh, yeah. uh, you know, Oscar care institutions. Right, like things to take care of the or, you know, orphan children. So And so many of the things that they did, they did um, unpaid and... Um, and, uh, and on a volunteer basis, the, uh, it, the apparel industry that that was part of the, 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 the country's main livelihood for so many years, and in fact, we're still celebrating that that legacy that's gone and hopefully coming back. But that was very predominantly women focused. Yeah, and it's a really nice uh, mix and balance between um, what the contributions by white women as well yeah. as the contributions by the African. American women, rich, poor, rich, poor, and then guess what, St. Louis? Prostitution oh, was yeah. legal for four years in the late 1800s, 1870 to 1874, yeah. and there was uh, a few uh, brothels that um, yeah. were successful, but one was run by a woman by the name of Priscilla, Priscilla Henry. Henry. She was an African American woman. Got, and this is a definitely like bullet points. You should def go to the, you know, look her up, go to the museum, check it out. But she ran two brothels, one for white white men, one for black men, um, and then uh, or you know non-white. And um, she was so successful at her business and was such a, like her employees loved her. The business, the other you know, the men in the community respected her, and she earned so much money doing. Copying the stock that she about two million dollars in today's yeah today's money she earned two million dollars and she bought the plantation where she had been a slave. Isn't that story? How when how she, that's owning your house. Oh no kidding. Yeah. She is the spider queen. She is a spider queen. But when she passed away, like she was not only celebrated here for all of her contributions and her entrepreneurialism, but she like was known across the country. The yeah. papers in New York, the papers in Denver, the papers all around remarked on the fact that this amazing woman who was notorious, who who was freed, started businesses, and then, you know, bought her. Bought, bought the yeah. plantation. Yeah, so there is, there's quite a bit, and some of the sad parts are that a lot of the racial issues that, that, that were described in the newspaper articles during this time frame are still happening today, which is kind of yeah. super, super depressing because, yeah. you know, we should be beyond that. 
Yeah, well, you know, interesting to think about. So the 19th Amendment, when it was passed 100 years ago, you know, that effort had started in the mid-1800s. Eight years. Yeah. I don't know if you're wrong. It might be 44. But it is 48 years for people to get the right to vote. And, and like, the insult of it was, of, and on top of all of it, was the fact that Women have been petitioning the Missouri legislature, you know, the legislatures every year to get mm -hmm. the right to vote, right? Petitioning. But it, they couldn't fill out the petition themselves because they weren't registered voters. They had to actually have men. They had to ask men to fill out yeah. the petition. Yeah. Like, hey, right. would you mind filling this out so that I can vote? Right. That right. was like, I did not know that. And, and I was like, <sighs> You had to, you had to like stomach or like keep your mouth shut. I don't know if I'd have been a good, I mean, I'd been a good suffragette, but not necessarily on like collecting a petition side. You know. So speaking of the term suffragette versus suffragist, this mm. is something that I thought was really fascinating too. They're very, they they stem from the same cause, but the interpretation of the words have very different meanings. And I thought that was fascinating. So suffragette comes more from the European background, from the, British. the British, and the suffragist is more American-based. And there were tactics employed during the movement have, you know, like apparently suffragette has a much more negative um, term, a connotation tied to it because they used some more violent tactics, whereas the suffragists were, was a peaceful protest model. Yeah. And there are other layers of distinction. I thought that that was really fascinating because I've never really, I've always kind of thought them to be the same. And essentially at the core they are. However, they did have slightly different Tactics, approaches. strategies. Yeah. And the women in Britain got the right to vote two years before the women in the United States. And I know that I had, I um, had, was woefully under uh, exposed to the truth like to all of this immense history in the women's uh suffragist movement or suffragette movement um throughout my life until the first time i went first exposure or like where my not exposure but like where the light bulbs went off was when i went to see that movie suffragette mm -hmm. and you can get it on amazon or you know look it up on um on uh, youtube or something i'm thinking of youtube but i know amazon would have it and it is the story of the suffragette movement mm. in Britain, and I had no idea. I had gone uh, with our, our friend Nikki to see that movie, and I was so angry because I didn't know all of this stuff. Yeah, really angry yeah. about it. Um, and then, and I have to say, I did not know until I've become an older adult, and through educating myself that um, that uh, women of color were excluded from the right to vote until 1964. Right. And I apologize that I was unaware of that. I kind of assumed, and you shouldn't assume in our country, that when they said women got the right to vote, I assumed it was all women. Well, originally, from what I gathered yeah. from the, and I, I tell you, I was, I was overwhelmed with information, so I may have gathered it incorrectly, but the, the, the way that it was written was open up to be inclusive. However, the uh, as the law was passed down locally, because it was up to the states, the states to ratify it, right? As it was passed down locally, there were all of these various measures that were put into place that made it challenging for those who were not in the right neighborhoods mm -hmm. and, you know, of certain you know, statures and whatnot, it made it challenging for them to, to vote. So, and it's still, they still making it challenging yeah. for people to vote. I mean, yeah. that is the tactic. Right. You know, Absolutely. So there were challenge. definitely measures locally that were put in place to prevent it. Constitutionally, it wasn't written to be exclusionary. Right. 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 Well, and another, another thing about this, and um, I, I have no idea how, how long have we been talking about I, it. I don't know. Are we, are I mean, we, we're passionate about are, it. Are we, are it's eight twenty-four. Okay, so we're near. We're nearly we're, halfway through today's yeah. time of the month. Yeah, we're 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 getting to the heavy part of the of the hour. of the flow of the flow. Um, okay. Yes, uh, but I was going to say, sorry, I'm distracted. Um, She's petting her about that. 
Catching my pussy cat. Exactly. Uh, Anything you need to do to make your time in the month better. <laughs> if you need to pet your pussy on camera, you pet I your pussy mean, on camera, right? You know. <laughs> For all the world to see. <laughs> Just hope you, hope you don't shed hair. Why is she shedding quite a bit? As long as it doesn't shed in my mind, I'm okay. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, Salem. I did not mean to that was a glare. Wow. upset you. I'm not. I'm not mocking your hair issue. Watch him leave now. It's like you, this is a luxury. You get to pet me. All right, and I was. Yeah. I was about to say something really profound. profound. <laughs> Super profound. Oh, I'm, I'm like rubbing his. Rubbing his oh, so yeah. Well, we were talking about like this microphone out of the way so you can see his face. Oh, check him out. All right. Well, we were kind of talking about <laughs> the right to vote. It's all about Salem. And Salem and the right to vote. And, and like, oh, I was going to say what I learned also. Did you say eventually you corrected? In, um, in 1918, the city of St. Louis hosted the Democratic National Convention. And um, there was the uh, line of silence. <clears throat> That line, it was 12 blocks of women from all over the country. Mm. They had a walkless, talkless demonstration as the as the delegates were walking to the convention center that's not there anymore, but it was the whatever the Coliseum, the old Coliseum. And if you're from St. Louis, it was the corner of Jefferson and Locust Street. Um, and so thousands of women from around the country came, and they stood on the side the sidewalks as all the delegates walked by with their sashes that said vote for women. Oh, wow. And it was such a powerful um, demonstration that um, it was put on the Democratic National Platform. Amazing. To, um, and that, what, what a cool thing to happen here in St. Louis. And that, the 100 year anniversary of that was in, um, I'm sorry, it was in 1916, See, so 2016. That gives me total goosebumps. Like the, the, the power in women of all backgrounds standing together side by side, silent. They didn't even have to say, they said everything with standing together. Right, because you know, if you don't have the vote, you have no voice. Right. You know? Oh my and if you don't exercise your voice, you know, um, it's just, uh, it's, it's just incredible. And I, I, I remember um, when, uh, in 2016, when, um, after the results of the election, and I did go to um, Washington on the March, the uh, Women's March in uh, January of 2017. Mm -hmm. And I remember, um, and I might have talked about this on the podcast before, but uh, it was like the weekend before I was going to be going, and I'd gone to uh, yoga class. And uh, one of my, you know, yoga friends uh, asked me what I was going to be doing, and, and I, I said, uh, oh, I'm going to the Women's March next weekend. And I was really excited about it. And she got very quiet, and you know, she was a she was a couple, maybe five years older than I am, and a white lady, um, and uh, she got very quiet, and she said, um, "Oh, I, I don't get political." Okay, so this was January after mm -hmm. after the results of the election, and my response, which was very very short, and I'm sorry, I have a little bit of Salem cat hair, cat hair in my head, my face. Um, my response was kind of curt and quipped, and I said, well, you know what? You need to thank all the women that came before you that have given you the luxury to not be political. Isn't that a perfect statement? Oh, my God. You know? Yeah. I mean, because we didn't, we, when we were reading all this stuff at the exhibit, I mean, yeah. there was there was a time in the state of Missouri where, and I'm sure in other states, where the women's property Unless it was specifically specifically spelled out in your contracts and your documents or whatever, was automatically the property of yeah. if you weren't married, yes. your and your father was alive, it would go to your father. But if you weren't married and your you had brothers, your property belonged to your brothers. Right. So nothing really belonged to you. Yeah. And there was a story about a, a oh fifteen God. year old girl who was working yeah. and she was practically orphaned. But she would have been working she was working. and had to give all of her yeah. earnings to her alcoholic father. Because she actually was living in an orphanage. 
she was right but yeah but but thankfully women worked to get that um that law changed in the state of yeah, Missouri. Yeah, a female attorney. Yes. Right? That's, yes. Um, which is just... But we need to think about, like, today. And I saw an article today, and I know I sent it to you, that there's a woman who's speaking, I, mean, I don't know if it was last night or tonight, in the RNC convention, who, on her... She's total... She's a total, you know, pro-life, anti... You know, pro-values, all that kind of stuff. Super, super right wing, right wing, and she has absolutely no problem with us reverting back to the head of the household vote. Like your house yeah. gets one vote, right? Right. I, I mean, I. She supports policies that keep us from being able to vote, and her name is Amy. It's Abby John. Abby Johnson, guys, women died for this. Men, men and women, of course, have died yeah. for us to be able to vote. And this woman who's speaking tonight or last night um, at the RNC is okay with us losing our right. individual right. So I live in a house with two of my two sons. So under her rule. My son, my oldest son, would be the one who got to vote for us. Right. And then and then somebody asked her, well, what if you have differing views? Like, you know, my mom and dad definitely voted on different sides of the aisle, right? My ex-husband and I voted on different sides of the aisle. And her statement was, well, um, they would have to talk about it. But in a God-fearing country and in a God-fearing marriage, the husband would have the ultimate say. I'm curious. Now, I did not see her speak. Uh, but I was I'm curious, like, what I, was the reaction of the crowd? Like, were they, were they supportive of this? Were they enthusiastic? Like, I'm I curious. Know. because I mean, I have, I have friends that are, you know, I have a diverse group of friends. I have friends on, you know, that are on the other side of the aisle than I am. And um, I, I, they would not be at all celebrating the point. The, the this, right to lose No, vote. my goodness, no. Yeah, well, that's, you know? that, but yeah. I do think it's a really curious choice for them to put her up and give her this platform because it's very, to me, telling of who they're, Catering to, yes, exactly. catering to, exactly. you know, the goals of the of their, of their party. They're giving this platform. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, I'm so glad we have our time of the month show tonight so that people don't have to watch the RNC. I mean, you know, at least we're giving them something <laughs> else, right? Some other kind right. of quality television. That's right. You know, if we're getting political. We are. <laughs> but we're talking with wine. But we're, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thankfully, we have some wine to go with it. Mm -hmm. But, um. But I, you know, you have to be aware that there are, um, so, so the cat is now moved on the camera, two uh -huh. and wants to sit in Denise's lap. Wants to sit in Denise's yeah. lap and rub his face on he's the camera. He's going to make the rounds. Yeah. You know, he's, he is, you know. Okay. That was his debut here on, that, on this time of the month. Um, but anyway, yeah. what we were saying is it's important. And if you, uh, the right to vote and women, I mean, really think about it. White women, we've only had this for a hundred fucking years. Why are you trying to give it away now? Right. Why would you give it away, period? Right. Why? Yeah. Right. We've only had it. We have to hold on to it as much as we can yeah. and, and fight for it, you know? Like, we need to we need to call out women who, who think it's okay to move us back to, you know, pre-Civil War days. Jesus. Here's what I'm kind of curious about. I, I'm an optimist, right? I, always the optimist. Always, and always, always yeah. the optimist. I find it hard to believe that that is the majority thought process of that side. No, I that we're hearing the voice of one radical crazy person. Why is it that it's the radical crazy people that are given so much opportunity to share their viewpoint? I think it really skews the conversation and makes it harder for the 
parties to come together and make progress happen because they're being what we're hearing is so radical. You know, it makes wow. those it makes the the opportunity to to come together even far. Well, I, I will I will I will take that just a little bit further. Thankfully, we know about it, right? Thankfully, we've heard about Abby Johnson, and we can work to um, minimize her, right? Um, when you don't hear about those fringe, I mean, she might be one. I mean, she's on the RNC platform, right? She's, right. she's got it. She's got a, a national audience to talk to. So when you when those people are elevated, we have to know. We have to be able to talk about what their their beliefs are, you know, and um, and then we can say, hey, I I'm not ready to give up my right to vote. Um, I'm not ready to have to petition men again to be able to exercise my my rights, my my voices, right? I mean, they were concerned that women, if women got the right to vote, that they would vote in prohibition, which they did, but. Um, I know in St. Louis that was not the case because Anheuser Busch was a, is is was a huge a major employer, so that was not the case in St. Louis. But it's really important that you know when you live in a society that you and you are affected by the by the rules and the laws that you have a right to express your opinion and express your right. your thoughts through your vote, and it and, and a right to vote is a right, and it's not something that you buy, mm -hmm. it's not something that you get because you are, you know, white or property owner, it is in the Constitution, and it is for everybody, so whatever you do, I don't care if you vote, you know, against how I vote in November, but just mm -hmm. vote, you know, don't... <sighs> Don't let, don't let somebody take that away from you. You know, one of the things that we talked about, and we've had a few conversations on this, but it's something I'm deeply concerned about is, you know, the, the actions that are being taken against the post office. Oh, um, yeah. You know, there is a absolute intentional attack, and they will not deny it. They have yeah. outright admitted to it that there is an intentional uh, uh, ploy to remove these high volume sorting machines per, per, before the election so that way you know ballots that are being mailed in maybe just might not make it you know yeah. and so i would just say like if you're going to be an absentee mail-in ballot because because of COVID, any number of sorts of covid you know family health wellness um you can still get the ballot but Oh my goodness, you can also have it delivered to, like you can drop that mail-in off it to a, to your local. And and I know people are like, office. what they say sure. is, you know, hey, well, you know what, if, if somebody gets an absentee ballot, you know, how do you, they won't know, and they can come and vote too. Well, I have an actual story from a friend of mine who had um, requested an absentee ballot for the primary in August, and she did not get around to sending it in. So she showed up at the polls to vote on the on August the fourth, whatever that primary day was. And when she went up, she was like, "Hey, I'm X Y Z, you know, I'm, I'm Miss So and So." They were like, uh, "It says here you have an absentee ballot." She was like, "Yeah, I, uh, I I did I requested one." They're like, "You have to surrender that ballot before oh. you vote." So she had to go home and she brought had to bring back that ballot. So that whole business about them not being able to know who has what is bullshit they yeah. know and um you know that it, and at least in st louis they can track and they know who has what and i was really impressed when i heard that and i was like you need to make sure you share that with a lot of people you yeah, know right. because yeah you know that's that's one of the one of the misinformations that they um you know, what is astounding to me is what's happening, like, with this attack on the post office. It it reminds me of something that, that we would have heard, you know, in the news years ago about another country, another country. that yep. has a dictator that's trying to prevent people from voting. And it, I, I just am astounded that this is 
we're we're living that we are having this well, kind girl, of interference. Yeah, I mean, it's just like just when we were watching going to that exhibit and the the same racial bullshit yeah. and and you know systems that were in place in 1920 are in place today. I know. You know, so this I guess the what we've learned in 2020 is nothing should surprise us. You know, and change takes a really long time. Right? It's like <laughs> it's systemic change, social change, it's like, layers of change. And I'm not trying to minimize this in any way, but it's like trying to lose weight. <laughs> you want it to be gone overnight, but they say one to two pounds a week is a nice, slow, a, a way healthy to, way. Healthy way <laughs> to get that weight off. So we can look at our society as a, uh, it needs to go on a diet and we need yeah. to um, definitely make some uh, total changes. But uh, oh, yeah. That oh, is my a really good point. oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So that's a. Uh, wow. This is kind of heavy blow. <laughs> This is this is very plotty. <laughs> happy uh, happy hundred anniversaries on the first step of uh, all women getting the right to vote and uh, win. Let's in, keep it, ladies. In two thousand and sixty uh, two thousand and sixty four, we will celebrate all women getting having the, the right having the right to vote in the United that's States. Like, that sounds that's like only a long time from now. Only forty four years from now, oh I'll be ninety five. That's crazy. We're still going to be having our time in the mind. Hold on. Hold on. Let me get closer. Help me. Can you help me? Can you help me a little bit, please? I'm trying to drink here. Oh, it just it just keeps getting out of the way. I guess Salem decided he's going to go that way now. He's getting, oh, all right. moving on to a new camera. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So <laughs> let's go on to something yeah. fun. Well, right? let's talk about boobs. Let's talk about boobs. We read this article. <laughs> Voting and boobs. boobs. Vote Voting. and boobs. They're both four letter words. <laughs> well, vote, they're very boobs. You know, we've been talking about. And if you're a woman, vote boobs. <laughs> no matter what. If you're at the polls, we already just have vote boobs. Vote. We already have the mail vote. You know. Uh, <laughs> Well, you know, we're all talking about feminism and empowerment and all of that. And, yeah. and we uh, came across this amazing article about boob positivity. Right. And it's, um, and the fashion industry, like, trying to make its mark in boob positivity. And it has a very, there's a very polarizing dialogue happening around this. It's, there is. It's, it's a combination of, um, you know, you're trying to make money off my boob shape and size versus, you know, the other side of the conversation, which is we're trying to celebrate all shapes and sizes, but to some, it feels um, shallow. So I thought, you know, we read this article today. I thought, oh my right, God, this is right. fascinating. And, it's, and the article's title is called Fashion's Boob Positivity Isn't as Feminist as It Seems. And, um, you know, in the fast fashion world, there's t-shirts now with, I know Emily just showed you like the line drawings of like boobs that aren't, that are like different shapes and sizes, um, more on the larger size. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't see many of them in the United States. It could be just, you know, it could be more of a European thing right now, Maybe. but you know, how things happen, it always comes over here. Um, where, you know, uh, let's say it's a larger sized breast line drawing on a t-shirt and a very very thin woman wearing it yeah um i'm about to sneeze Hold on. Yeah. well and it's not just a larger size boob it's also like saggy <coughs> boobs or you know big boob small boob different nipples like there's all this variation of boobs yeah that they're representing and go ahead and i think that the like my take on it would be again the intention isn't to make people feel bad it's to it's to shine a light on the fact that there's all different shapes and sizes and there's beauty in all of those uh yeah i hear what you're saying yeah. um but also i resonated per personally with some of the things that the the writer was saying in this article and her name is uh, gina tonic i wonder if that's a uh, pen a, name. A pen name. Yeah. 
But anyway, um, Gina talked about as a as a woman who is a like she wears an F cup. So if you are not aware, you have your A, B, C, D, double D, which would be an E. So a triple D would be an F. Okay. So she's yeah. an F. So she's you know she's she's you know um, healthy. And I before I had my breast reduction in two thousand and five, I was an H. Oh wow. An H. My boobs would enter the room, and then, like, five minutes later, <laughs> I would you. show up. Yeah. Oh, my God. And I, I, I couldn't sit in the booth because my boobs would, like, slide along the table. Oh. This was after my last child. That sounds painful. It was very painful. I didn't realize how much pain I was in until I had my reduction. Yeah. And, uh... Would, was that all linked to the lipedema? Well, I think so, now that I yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah, all, all of that's kind of related. I mean, my, my uh, plastic surgeon took five pounds off my boobs. Oh, my God. So I like, think about five pounds of hamburger meat on top of your boobs. So I could relate to the things that this woman was saying about, you know, when you are, when you don't look like what um, society thinks you're supposed to look like or what you think society thinks you should look like, you are very, very self-conscious, mm -hmm. right? You And because we want to. We want to have a thin, trim body that everybody idolizes, right? I mean, the Rubenesque figure is, has not been idolized really since, you know, Rubin's time. Um, but, uh, you know, but it's changing, right? More of my, my the younger generation is yeah, way more body positive yeah. than our generation. Absolutely. Uh, prior, prior generations. So that movement with the body positivity and I'm all curves and it's okay, I'm going to be curvy, you know, love me for who I am. Um, I would say that's where like the fashion industry goes, hey, we can support this, okay. right? Have the, you know, commodify that for right. this, you know, and so then you have these pictures or the t-shirts and the different kind of boobs. And, and it's, again, it's like, why, why are you wearing it? Well, and that I think is intention. I, I think there's a little bit of taking the power back. It's like, you want to sexualize these? Guess what? I'm going to put them out there in a different way and take that power away. To me, it feels like, it does feel like an empowerment thing. Well, I would, I mean, the, the woman was talking in the article about, you know, really, like, you know, thinner women wearing the t-shirts with the larger saggy Ooh. shirts, sure. which are not, it's kind of like, that's not who you are. Right. I mean, you you don't have the saggy, misshapen. You, you don't have that boob. So why are you wearing it? And they talk in the article about like some people are doing it because they think that that's a feminist, you know, a way to be a, a yeah. good feminist. But she said that's really like shallow feminism. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if you have, if you don't have the the F size or the or the you know the mismatch, then you know wear a t-shirt that is more reflective of who you are okay i i mean i could because you know what you can always take that t-shirt off the women yeah. who have the f's the h's whatever they so can't if the shirt could actually weigh 10 pounds more then would that be <laughs> yeah, like... yeah yeah okay go ahead and carry it and then at, when you're done i want you to have like the the ridges in your shoulders because of you know carrying and wearing that t-shirt you know yeah. it's it we can't we we have we yeah. can't minimize I can see how it could feel maybe insensitive, but I would I believe that the women who have have participated in this, most of them I would choose to believe, are doing this in support, like you know trying to embrace all bodies and sizes and and celebrate that rather but than I don't really see a whole lot of heavier women walking around with skinny women t-shirts. <laughs> You know, I mean, I think if we had like the same thing, like on the reverse, it would probably be easier. And it just goes to our society's mm -hmm. fucking uh, obsession with Victoria's Secret does not do anybody any favors when they have their like with yeah. when they have their over idolized, idealized, not idolized, but all idolized as well, over idealized and over sexualize mm -hmm. that form that they promote 
And if you don't fit in the Victoria's Secret body, too bad, so sad. You're yeah. not, you're not is, a true but, woman, Which right? is not even 2% of the population. Right. 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 Yeah. I mean, I would sad. have to be like seven feet tall <laughs> right. to fit the Victoria's Secret <laughs> idea. Yeah, I know. It's, and, you know, and that is something that, that's shifted, what, I mean, the twiggy years of fashion mm -hmm. happened. 60s? 70s? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, you think, think of old Hollywood, you know, Marilyn Monroe, she was five foot two and 136, 150 pounds. Yeah. You know, that is somebody who was more Ruben-esque than, you know, the and current. Right. I mean, yeah. you know. But I do love this, this younger generation who are, you know, really, like you said, body positive, celebrating all of the curves. I think it's, it's really important. You know, I, I'm i glad to know about the controversy behind this trend because I would be more aware now of the you know, sensitive nature of it. I would not have picked this T-shirt up saying, you yourself. oh, right. I would have been like, yeah, this is, this is beautiful too. You know, it would have been my feeling about it. So. Well, I mean, you know, because, you know, you can. You know, you, you, you are on the, um, I don't know if people can tell, but Emily's on the. <laughs> The thinner side of life, <laughs> um, as opposed to her co-host, who is on the Ruben-esque side. On of the life. normal side. <laughs> However, like if I, I would not feel comfortable grabbing a, uh, one of those T-shirts and wearing those. I would yeah. not feel comfortable because I would feel like, why? I don't want to draw attention to my boobs unless I have had a little wine and I'm wearing my statement panties. Yeah. Then I'll draw attention to my boobs. But I, I you know, it's, it's. Yeah. It, but I, but one, the thing that really hit me. In this article was the statement faux feminism. Mm. You know, and I think we should explore that a little more. Okay. I think we should explore that idea, you know, what what makes a feminist and why do you think by wearing a t shirt or um, a hashtag uh, makes you truly truly about, you know, Advancing the causes and advancing women across the world. You Don't know? you think that just like everything, there can be a wide range of of what it means? And as I think, if the intention is, I mean, basically, feminism, the root of it is, is equal rights, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, feminism, the word, has been. Um, under attack by various movements and has gotten this whole like militant hate um you know kind of you have to hate men to get better yeah, but know, you don't you and don't that's not to. it the, the bottom line is it's it's equal rights so i think as long as you are as a feminist wanting other women you know to have opportunities and to rise and well, there's wanting, and then there's working to per, to make those things happen. You know, okay. a lot of us, and I, you know, I think for um, our in our society, we either want to write a check, or we want we don't want to actually see, we don't want to actually touch the problem. We we're like, I have a sign in my yard, so that I'm I'm all for it, or I. I, you know, I have hashtagged or I shared something on social media, and that's as, that's as, as messy and as dirty as I get. Yeah. And I see, think the same thing, too, when they're talking about faux feminism, right? You, you're, you think by just doing those superficial aspects that you that you're truly understand the struggle or the need. And we need to, okay. we need to, we need to say, hey, I see your hashtag. I see what you're doing, but let's, you need to get involved a little more. You need to open your eyes a little more. You need okay. to read a little more. You need to listen to Clearly Speaking, the podcast. Fair enough. I agree. There's always things we can do to become better, become yes. better people, become better at any cause we believe in. I think it's important to acknowledge like when the heart is in the right place, because you never know somebody's circumstances right. and limitations they're right. working with. I, yeah. I, I think it's like we maybe not necessarily just recognize when the heart's the right place, but encourage that heart to take that step further, right? Because a lot of us just like getting our pat, we like getting patted on the back because we're, you know, because we, we did that good thing. 
and that should be enough, right? Um, oh, no. I mean, it's, it's, but if you, that's not the right intention behind it, though. Just getting the added girl, that's not why we're doing it. Right. And that needs to be, you, you know, um, I welcome everybody to start their journey and to, um, to take the step, right? The more you know, the more you educate, the more you listen, the more you, you mm -hmm. go to museums, you know, the more you uh, recognize that, or think about, I mean, my God, I love the fact that my children have called me out on stuff for, I don't know, I don't think I've, I don't think, since they became old enough to call me out on things without worrying that I would be upset, yeah. uh, I've just grown because they, they helped me rethink things. Right. Um, we are getting close, close to our the end. final five minutes. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna call the control room and ask our producer if we had any Do questions. Have any questions that anybody or... wants us to answer? Oh, the dogs are asking some questions. And what is Toby? Toby's asking, why are you walking this late at night in the neighborhood? Right in front of my, my are stuff. you dangerous? Are you not a feminist? <laughs> are you wearing and an inappropriate boob shirt? <laughs> <laughs> are you faux? Are you faux are you a faux walker? <laughs> I mean, it's totally fine if nobody has any questions because they listen to all of our podcasts and there's like, they're what else could they possibly they're know? I do have I do have some requests for you. Oh, do we have a question? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, what's the question? Okay. A question. Cool old brick wall. Where are y'all? <laughs> well, John, as a matter of fact. We are in Studio C, and we appreciate that you noticed our cool old brick wall. We have, um, you know, the next time you see this podcast, we might have a, like a waterfall or something behind us. <laughs> we might have the Apple Tower but, uh, behind us. We are using a, uh, a thing called a green screen, so on some of our, mm -hmm. our other shots, you notice that the wall went away. Oh, oh no, no, on the beach. <laughs> On the beach, so, absolutely. Yeah, you know, it's it's, it's totally great. Uh, and now we're in. Uh, we're actually we're, we're we're at the Spider Queen's castle. It's my lair. And Welcome we're, to my lair. Now we're back to the brick wall. Yeah. Wow. But uh, you know, we're just trying to up our game here. And uh, next thing on the budget will be lighting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that kind of lighting that makes us look twenty years younger. Yeah, kind of lighting. I, I need to. I need to see if any of Oprah's uh, lighting technicians, you know, want to volunteer on our podcast. Um, I That's guess. right. I've earned every line. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But we've had uh, we've had a really great uh, season five already um, that has come out. With, yeah, what's uh, coming next, Michelle? Next uh, coming up Friday is going to be the conversation with Don <gasps> and Carrie. The uh, Just Moms. Oh my we talk gosh, about these ladies are so amazing. You're going to love them. And we talk about the landfill, the Christian landfill, and then we have Don Reed after that, and then we have the Touch a Topic Tuesdays women. We have uh, Tanina coming up. We have so Tanina. many great, oh great my episodes. God. You guys are going to love them. But we do yeah. have a small request, just a tiny request of all of you guys. Um, we appre so appreciate your support, your following, your you know watching us on the show, listening to us. But if you could go to Apple Podcasts to our Clearly Speaking page and just five star us like your Uber driver, mm -hmm. that really helps us because yeah. then that helps other people know about us. And I know that we have more than thirty seven people who like us. <laughs> We do. I mean, we do know that. I have 40 friends myself, <laughs> and Emily has 43 friends. So if combined, that would be 83. We should have, we should have 83 likes, 83 oh stars, um, 83 five stars. And so if you could five star us, leave a review, that would be awesome. But in, and mostly, go to Apple Podcasts. There's one, two, three, four, five. Click five. It helps. It helps. Well, what it does is it, it helps the podcasting systems know that we're legit. Yeah. And it puts yeah. it in the feed. Well, we are legit because we've had over 28,000 listens of our podcasts. And all around the world. All around the world. Yeah. So, all around the world, if you could, go to Apple Podcasts. <laughs> Australia, you, we know you're there. You're we our, love you. You're our number two country <laughs> now. You overtook Sweden, and we love you, Sweden. But <laughs> uh, if you guys could just go to Apple Podcasts.
podcast. Even if you listen to it on something else, go to Apple Podcasts and mm-hmm. five star us. So, or how many? Wow. I mean, I don't want to. Uh, are we? Are we? Oh my god. I'm all dried up. I'm done. <laughs> the drip is over. The drip is over. We're finished. We're finished with our time of the month. Whew. That wow. was painless. Wasn't well, hopefully, it? hopefully for our cutterati, it was painless too. <laughs> but <laughs> thank you guys. It was a lot of fun as always. Thank you for joining us. And um, we'll see you, we'll next, see you next month. month. Otherwise, catch us every Friday, uh, wherever you get your podcast. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>